This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. We're talking with forensic psychologist Kate Walinga today on this segment, discussing the sentencing of Lori Vallow Daybell. Do you think Lori's religious beliefs, obviously, in her mind, they influenced her actions? Will these be taken into considering when taken into consideration, rather, when sentencing begins? No. I think that they'll try that. Yeah. But uh, honestly, that makes it worse. If you're coming from a platform of having these serious religious beliefs, theoretically, that should make you less likely to do things like kill children. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you'd think. And uh, like, I don't have the Ten Commandments measure- memorized, but I'm pretty sure that would fall under the be a good person yep. or do not, statue. Do not kill. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Specifically it's, for it, yes. <laughs> it, 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 and it, it really wouldn't be to her benefit. There's a reason why a lot of convicted felons or inmates find religion after they're incarcerated. And that's because they're looking for a parole date. They're looking for a reconsideration of sentencing. And it works by saying, look, I've changed. But playing up this idea of, look, I've been so deeply religious all along. It's my friend. You killed your children. Yeah. That's not that that's too little too late and so i i am not a believer in longer sentences being effective i'm not i still 100 percent certain that prison is the right placement for her i don't know right now prison in the united states the prison industrial complex is the largest provider of mental health services that we have in this country so i guess it's it's comparable to if she was in a psychiatric facility and probably has better security. So I guess we keep her there. But she's proven that the people that are in the most danger from her are people she knows. And so I, I just don't know. I don't really have an opinion on length of sentence. I don't think she's going to get treated in a way that will make anything any better. And the thing about a lot of offenders is that one when you are incarcerated any sense of development neurodevelopment stops you go into permanent constant survival mode and that remains as such the whole time that you're in prison and then when you're released you are chronologically older so you go into prison at 40 and maybe you're released at 60. So your driver's license will say that you're 60 years old, but really you're no more developed of a human being than you were at 40. Like you're still, you still are going to act the same way as when you went in. And I don't have an answer for that. I don't feel like keeping her for longer is like she needs to, the, I'm not saying it well because there, I believe strongly that there, there does need to be punitive measures taken. Sure. She's not safe to be out in the community. I don't want to be living next to her. I don't want her to have access to children, whether it be her own or mine. That being said, I don't have a sense of how many years is the right number of years. Is and there, is- I certainly don't think that claiming now, yeah. hey, but I'm religious, is going to help her in any way. I mean, is there a right number of years for something like this, regardless of her belief systems or what she professes to to truly hang her hat on when it comes to religious beliefs? Isn't it just simply, look, you should never be out ever. We're, we're like society, we at some point with individuals just need to say, we're sorry, there's nothing more we can do. You've really, you've pushed it too far this time. You can't be out. Being in is not going to do much for you, but you're better being here and just locked away until you finally die and not necessarily even have to worry so much about, well, what are we going to do for this this individual? Are, are some people just simply beyond reproach when it comes to any sort of recovery or any sort of mental health assistance? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But how, I, the problem is 
how do you know who that's going to be until you try? Yeah. You know, that there are cases around the world. Vince Lee is one up in Canada. He's the guy who beheaded another bus traveler. Okay. Decades ago. And he spent a significant amount of time in prison. Carla Homolka is another Canadian case. They did really big, bad stuff. And both of them spent a fair, a significant amount of time in prison. Both of them have been released to the community and have not repeated violence. And both of them would arguably, from the American perspective, have been the lock them up, throw away the key type. Yeah. But the reality is they went, they served their time, they got some treatment, and they were observed in the community, and they reestablished a life. And so there are people that I believe are not ever going to get better, but there are people that I think surprise us in the sense that, look, I don't want to go hang out with with Mm -hmm. Vince Lee or with Carla Homoko. I don't want to do that. I don't want them to join me for games night or whatever. Yeah. But if they can prove that they can live a nonviolent life, okay. But isn't that a big ask, though, for the communities that they're released into that then, okay, this person did these horrible things, and now we're saying, let's give them another chance. Let's do it in your neighborhood with your kids around. With all, Why should the rest of society have to live in fear and stress and the easy answer could be they don't have to that's their choice no they don't you don't have a choice when that sort of thing is imposed on you other than the law says that they have the right to do that when something like that and so horrendous as to what they did why should society have to deal with the anxiety and stress that those people will bring on inevitably for the actions that they chose to take in the argument of let's give them a second chance if society isn't nervous about that already, I don't know. Oh, it is. But, but where why, they're looking? But, but why because add more pepper to the recipe? Essentially, at least it, at least you know where to look, and yeah. at least they are under strict post-release guidelines and yeah. situations. And oh, it's the American parole system not great. You may notice I didn't have American sure. examples to pull up right away mm-hmm. because the American parole system misses all the time. It just, the number of cases that we can come up with, the J.C. Dugard kidnapping case, where the parole board was actively visiting the home where she was being held captive, was actively interacting with her. And they were just like, yeah, okay. So it's always, there's no foolproof thing here. There's no way where we can say, okay, we can clean up the all risk, but living in society in, is in itself a risk. Yeah. And we're, are we going to just lock away everybody and only know them by the worst thing they've ever done? Like, I don't like that either. I, so I don't really know the answer except that you take it case by case and you turn it into a correctional rehabilitative system rather than a punitive system. Sure. Because we've proven that we cannot punish the bad behavior out of people. So there's got to be another approach. And instead, we just keep building more prisons. Should this case bring about some changes? Do you think it will bring about about any sort of changes about how religious beliefs are allowed to influence parenting and the well-being of children? Uh, Because clearly, obviously, these kids ultimately died at the hands of of Lori and her brother and Chad because of their religious beliefs. Should there be more restrictions on this? Should we be able to step into someone's life and say, yeah, you have freedom of religion, but until you start harming the children, and this has been an issue for years, obviously there's times there's been arguments. There's been court cases where children are not getting the medical attention they need because mom believes that's the work of the devil or what have you. You, th- that's two very different questions. Should it and will it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And like for me, please worship how you see fit, but there are limits to how you can treat your child. And I really do struggle. And I have close relatives that 
fall into that category of we don't seek medical care. Okay. And I think they're to get technical, batshit crazy. Like <laughs> I, I look at the times, like my God, like I, a, a one relative of mine fell down and active broke their arm, and it, it like visibly broke their arm, and it took creating a distraction to sneak the kid into the car to get them to the hospital to yeah. get them treated. And then there was this huge family blowout because how dare you? And I rem- I was pretty young at the time, I was eight or ten, and. Just remember thinking this isn't religion is supposed to be about healing, (laughs) treating your fellow man in certain ways. And if you fall down and broke your arm, don't you want somebody to care for you? Yeah. And sometimes the answer is no. And so I don't really know the answer to that, but I do know that children fall in a protective class. And so there is no excuse Religion, mental illness, substance abuse, there's no excuse for a child to exist in a harmful environment. So should there be changes? Yeah, totally should. Will there be? I don't know. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. 